Welcome to Electron Online and here we're going to show you the first method of how to graph a parabola. And this method really works for any equation, especially if you have no other way of figuring out how to graph the equation, you simply want to come up with a table of x and y values. Remember a function like this, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3, means that the value for y depends on the value for x. So when you plug in a certain value for x, you get a corresponding value for y. What makes it a function is that there's only one value for y for each one value of x. If, let's say, you plug in an x and you have two possible values for y, then it's no longer a function. In this case, this is a function for every one value of x, there's only one corresponding value for y. So what you do is you try some numbers. You plug some numbers in there and see what the corresponding values for y are, which are then, of course, numbers on the graph that you're going to graph. All you have to do is connect the dots that you come up with when you plug the numbers in an xy axis and you get the graph. So just watch. So first let's always start with 0. 0 is a good place to start. When x equals 0 we get y equals 0 plus 0 plus 3 so y equals 3. So that was easy. Now what if x is equal to 1? Well what you want to do then is plug a 1 in for every x. So you write y when x is equal to 1 is equal to 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 3 that would be 1 plus 4, that's 5, plus 3, that's equal to 8. So when x equals 1, then y equals 8. All right, let's try another value. What if x is equal to 2? So y, when x is equal to 2, is equal to 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 3. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 plus 8 is 12, plus 3 is 15. Now you can see that as x gets bigger, y gets bigger rather quickly. So now what we may want to do is we want to go the other direction, see what happens then. What if x equals negative 1? Alright, when x equals negative 1 we get y. When x equals negative 1, this is equal to, you may want to use parentheses here, negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 3. Notice that negative 1 squared is still positive 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 1 minus 4 is minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So in this case y is equal to 0. Alright, let's try another value. y when x equals negative 2 is equal to, again, we plug in negative 2 for every value for x. So negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 3. So this is equal to 4 minus 8 plus 3. That would be equal to minus 1. So when x equals negative 2, y is negative 1. Now you ask yourself the question, well, when do I know how, when to stop? Well, I can see that the value for y is still getting smaller, and I know that with a parabola I'm trying to find where first y will get smaller and y will get bigger. So I'm going to continue until I see y become bigger again. All right, so let's try y when x equals negative 3. Negative 3, and so that becomes negative 3 squared. Again, we're going to plug in negative 3 for every value for x there. So negative 3 squared plus 4 times negative 3 plus 3. So this is equal to 9 minus 12 plus 3. And notice this will be 0. So now it looks like it's beginning to swing around and y becomes bigger again. So it looks like I found the vertex or something very close to the vertex somewhere in this neighborhood right here. So let's try one more value. y when x is equal to negative 4, that's equal to negative 4 squared plus a negative, oh, plus a 4 times negative 4, always good to write it in the same correct order, plus 3, so this would be 16 minus 16 plus 3, which is 3, so sure enough, as x becomes smaller, y becomes larger again. So now we have a set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points that we could put on the xy axis, on the Cartesian coordinate system. So here's the y-axis, there's our x-axis, we can mark up the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, same with y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so forth. All right, so let's find the points x equals 0, y equals 3. So x equals 0, y equals 3, 1, 2, 3, that's this point right there x equals 1, y equals 8, so x equals 1, y equals 8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's this point right there. When x equals 2, y equals 15, when x equals 2, y equals 15, that's way up here somewhere. Okay, when x equals negative 1, y equals 0, 
So x equals negative 1, y is 0, that's this point right there. When x equals negative 2, then y equals negative 1, that would be this point right there. Negative 1 is right there. Negative 3 back to 0, that's this point right there. And negative 4, 3. So negative 4 and 1, 2, 3, we're back up at this point right there. So now you can see that the points are, are shaping a nice parabola. Now all you have to do is connect those points. Right there. All right, so there's a parabola. Now this technique is kind of an approximate technique because we're not sure that we did indeed find the, the um, vertex, the lowest point on the parabola. And, we're, and of course at this point we do know for sure that we crossed the y-axis at the exact correct space because when x equals, um, right here, when x equals zero, oh, oh, when x equals zero, there we go, found the wrong point. When x equals zero, y equals three, so we know that it crosses the y-axis at that exact point. We're not sure that this is the vertex. Although, because of the symmetry, notice that at minus one, y is zero, at minus three, y is zero, in, the, in between point, it's minus one. This is most likely the vertex. If I were to take my guess, that's probably the vertex right there at the bottom of the problem. But that's how we do that. We use a table of values, and no matter how complicated the equation is, this looks like a very nice parabola, but we can have some very odd numbers, fractions, decimals. We can still find the x and y corresponding values, plot them on the graph, and make a parabola. And it's a good technique to find what the parabola looks like. And that's how we do that.